That's a real oh, that's a real pretty in there. What, what do you make it out of? Quail droppings. Dropping? Organic matter. Manure. It kind of makes you the Cartier of caca. <laughs> in Burt Reynolds' latest movie, Stand On It, Burt, Lonnie Anderson, and Jim Neighbors knew him as Dad Siegel, the man who made jewelry from quail droppings. Well, his name was created for the movie, but no scriptwriter can take credit for his occupation. In real life, Franco Hill from Lockhart, South Carolina, is the world's most unusual jeweler. Franco Hill, the manure man of South Carolina. Now, that's not a very nice title, I know, but I figure if you never had no title in your life before, any title you got is better than no title at all. Frank didn't start out in the jewelry business using the usual diamonds and rubies. Instead, he decided on a more accessible raw material. His decision was only natural. You see, Frank used to own a quail farm, raising thousands of the little birds every year. Then, in the early 70s, the price of feed doubled. I was up in a birdhouse watching them birds eat that high-priced feed. It really seemed like he was eating it twice as fast and twice as much. And about all I was getting out the back end was a dropping. And I thought it'd be a good joke maybe if I'd, uh, you know, embed some of them in plastic and sell them to some of my Yankee friends, you know. They'd always sold me a bunch of crap, seemed like. Everybody seemed to think it's great, you know. See, it's the only article on the market today that I know of that's guaranteed to be 100% crap to start with. Hello, birds, partners. Frank has only a few quail left, but those birds provide him with all he needs for a booming business. His day starts early. The first one they let go of in the morning will be the biggest one that they drop all day long. He chooses only the best droppings. Then he dries them, bakes them in plastic, and attaches chain pins or cord. Then they're packaged in the quail dropping necklaces, tie tacks, and bolo ties are ready for market. Not the expensive jewelry stores, but the local Western Auto in nearby Union, South Carolina. Yes, sir. Some of your quail drop. Okay. <clears throat> what color would you like? Despite his low-key approach to marketing, word of Frank's bold new creations quickly spread. He was asked to appear on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson last May, and Frank had his first taste of Hollywood. He discovered that high society takes a little getting used to. And he took me out of that big long limousine. And had all them dark windows in it you couldn't see. And he opened the door and said, Mr. Hill, I hope you'll be comfortable sitting here, you know. And I looked in there and there wasn't a soul inside of that thing. And I told him, I said, I tell you, I'd feel more comfortable sitting up in the front with you. He said, what? I said, yeah, I would. He said, people don't ride up front with a limousine driver when they get limousine service, you know. I said, I'd feel more comfortable. It's all right, so I guess it'd be all right, so I rode up there in the front with him. But that's where I made the first mistake when I got to California, because when you get to the Universal Hotel, there's lots of people standing out there with cameras making pictures of who gets out of them limousines. Well, they all had their cameras pointed on that door that I was supposed to get out of, but when I got out the front up there at him, went around the back to get my bags, they dropped them cameras and didn't make no pictures. See, man, I'd been sitting up there in that limousine, he was like old Frank old Hill done got to Hollywood. Yo, wouldn't that be something, you know? And I presented Mr. Carson with a star, and I told him I'd broke the mold. I didn't really, but I, you know, I've told other people that, but you know, I kind of go, but it was a star with a great big dropping, and I told him, you know, it was a big dropping for a big star. He said it was real touching, but I didn't see no tears coming out of his eyes. Now, I, people laugh when I tell them. I tell them that, that Bert saw me on the Johnny Carson show, that Bert Reynolds saw me on the Johnny Carson show, and he thought I looked so much like him that he wanted me to be in a movie with him. But see, people laugh when I tell them that. Bert Reynolds really did see Frank on The Tonight Show, and he had his director, Hal Needham, call Frank to offer him the part of Dad Siegel in Stand On It, Bert's newest movie about a struggling stock car driver. Where, where is Dad? He's right here with me, Dad! Ah, Stoker, we all mighty proud of you back home, son. Oh, thanks. At least we was. But Hal called me, and he asked me, he said, uh, you know, I thought it was somebody pulling my leg about the movie, you know, but and talking about Burt Reynolds, they wanted me to be in the movie and how I need them, you know, and I, I haven't been to the movies in a good while. I've been so busy, you know, raising birds and getting up droppings and making manure, jewelry out of manure, so I, he said, have you been seen any movies lately? I said, well, I saw Gone with the Wind. 
son, I know about making jewelry out of quail dropping. But this acting business, I don't know nothing about that. You just want to try it one more time, Dad. I don't know nothing. No, no. I know nothing. Nothing. I know nothing. I am just the... What, what am I? You can be in a movie even with people like Burt Reynolds and Miss Lonnie Anderson. You don't have to have no talent. You sure don't have to be good looking, you know. And I get around them people I feel just like exactly like that dog I used to have felt. I used to have a dog. I used to carry it all the dog shows. I know they wouldn't win no prize, but I know they'd get to meet and smell of some of the nicest dogs in the world when they got there, you know. Frank's a success now, but not without having some close calls along the way. His wife nearly shut down his business once, just as it was getting off the ground. Yeah, I almost went out of business when I first went in business. My wife came home early one day, and I had the bread pan full of these droppings, getting the moisture out of me. You to dry them out, you know, and she didn't take to that at all. I just opened the oven door for something and saw them, and I didn't know what they were. I had to buy a whole new set of bread pans. I thought I was going to have to buy a new stove for a little bit. But he'd come back in again with some more, and I had the oven sprayed. Well, the business survived, and now Frank has shown his jewelry on nationwide TV and even in the movies. So all he has to do is sit back and let the orders pile up. But Frank doesn't want his business to get too big. I really don't want to sell a whole lot of it, because if you spend too much time in the manure factory, you get to smelling bad after a certain length of time, you know. 